When last did you experience a wisdom shit? It takes the wise to rise. Wisdom is needed to achieve distinction in your workplace, family life, business, and relationship with your creator. Join Osiris Wisdom, a consultant on leadership, entrepreneurship, and relationships, as he teaches on practical wisdom to help you take the lead in life. You will experience a shift. Shifting your mindset, shifting your life. And so let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you take from the pages of the scriptures and inscribe on the table of our hearts. And at the end of the day, may we become wiser and actionable in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so, um, pastor started teaching, taking the decade by storm. And I've been on that series. And um, today we're going to take it, take it a step further. You know, the last point he raised was strategic thinking, strategic mindset. And under the strategic mindset, you know, we've handled a couple of things. Last Sunday, the last point was actually your resource inventory. Because sometimes we think we do not have what it takes to achieve what God has called us to, to do. But the truth is, we have everything we need. Praise the Lord. The truth is that we have everything we need to do what we want to do. Now, before we go there, I'd like us to turn our Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15 and verse 5. God speaking to Abraham. You see what God told Abraham. And he brought him forth abroad. It's not as if he took him to America or... He just brought him to a place where he could see Luke very far and said, look now towards heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. Praise the Lord. God brought Abraham out and began to ask him to look. And Abraham looked at the sky and saw the stars, and saw how vast, how many they were. And the Lord said, that is how thy seed shall be. I want us to see the way Abraham saw. Because the blessings of Abraham, they are us. Amen? God said, through you shall all people be blessed. That's heavy. And by virtue of what Jesus did on the cross, we are Abraham's seed. And if we're Abraham's seed, we ought to have access to what Abraham has access to. We sing that song, Abraham blessings, am I right? But practically, we need to experience Abraham's blessings. And if you look all through the story of Abraham, Abraham, after God showed him everything, didn't fold his hands, oh, praise the Lord. 2018, December 31st, I'm sure some of us here were in crossover service. The lots of prophecies that went out. One of the things you want to ask yourself, because I did reviews, some of those things that we believe God told us, why didn't they come to pass? Is it that God is not able to do, God was not able to do them? No. You find that, that some of us, we just lazy about, that's the truth. We didn't take it seriously. Because if we take it seriously and pursue it, we will get it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And that is what I want to share. Please, I want you to listen attentively because if you will put to practice everything that pastor has been teaching, by December 2020, you will be dancing. Praise the Lord. We're church people, and that is, not an, that is not a disadvantage. You know, I keep saying this in as church people, we have too many things. We have the blood. We have the name. We have the anointing oil. We have so many things, mantles. But how come a lot of people, not everybody, some people do not produce so much? Then you see some people who some of us claim they are unbelievers. How come they produce so much? Because it's not every of them that is using juju. I hope you know. So people are just good at what they do. And they, 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 they throw themselves inside. God speaking to Timo 
Timothy, in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 18, this scripture is very key. Do you know what Paul told, told Timothy? He says, son, by the prophecies that have gone out on you, war a good warfare. What does that tell us? It is not enough for a war to have been declared from the altar. If we do not do anything with the word, nothing will happen. And God will be on the throne. He said, by the prophecies, by the words spoken over you, use it and begin to war a good warfare. And it's not to carry knife and be killing people. <laughs> you war in your mind. You war with your capacity. You also war in the place of prayer. Praise the Lord. He said, war a good warfare. Psalms 37 and verse 23 said, the steps of a good man, the steps of a righteous man, they are ordered by the Lord. And you must know that God has already started ordering your steps. And you must, as a child of God, you must walk by faith. To know that you are taking steps towards what God has called you to do. It can be so easy to believe the negative things. It's very easy for somebody to believe that if he takes drug, the thing will work than to say, God, hear me. The mind just conditioned that if I take paracetamol, my, this headache will go. We must attach that level of faith to what we do. If not, this year will come and go and some persons will still be at the same level. And God will still be God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So today we'll be looking at taking actionable steps. You see, it's action, Abby. After you have done koroba, kurakaba, so koroba, you speak in tongues from morning till night, you must act. Tell somebody action. No, can I get it harder? Say action. A very beautiful story is the story of four men who we know as the four leprous men. Wow. These guys are something. I think in the book of 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 7, the Bible said there was famine in the land. And these guys thought to themselves, if we stay here, we will die. <laughs> if we go back, what will happen? Hunger will kill us. But if we move forward, it is possible that we may die or we may live. Praise the Lord. So we must ask ourselves, why sit I here till I die? Not even just to die. Why sit I here and remain at the same level? These guys were leprous guys. And you think that ah, they were highly disadvantaged. I don't think there's any leper in this house. Thank God pastor talked about reality check on Sunday. You want to ask yourself, where was I last year? Where am I now? Where do I want to go to? It's very, very important. So those leprous guys decided that they were going to step forward. That thing that will happen tomorrow should happen. You know, sometimes you come to a point where it's either yes or yes. Have you got to that point in your life? Where, eh, even though you are afraid, you do it with, in spite of the fear. Praise the Lord. That's the kind of heart. Do you think when God told the children of Israel he was going to give them the land, you think some of them were not afraid? Is there anything that God has ever asked anybody to do in the Bible that some of them didn't have to fight to get it? I don't know if you understand. How come is it when people get born again, they just want to get, well, the Lord we do it. The Lord we cook the stew. The Lord, do we do what I do? I'm just waiting on the Lord. Bros, God has been waiting on you. I'm just waiting on the Lord to do it. We're not saying we should take the place of God, but there are certain things God will never do. There are certain things God will never do. So if you want to take actionable steps, what are, what are some of the things you want to do? Number one, we must conquer fear. Oh my God. You see, fear. Fear is terrible. Fear is terrible. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 6, this is what the Lord said to the children of Israel. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not. Why 
would God say fear not? Because he knows fear is coming. So before time, he gives you a fear not in your spirit. Nor be afraid of them, for the Lord thy God, he it is that goeth with thee. He will not fail nor forsake thee. I want us this 2020, for us to, you know, just like for those of us that are married, you just know that your partner is by, you, by your bed like this. I want you to see the Holy Spirit like that with you physically as you're going out. Because when we are afraid and we refuse to act, we're actually saying, God, you cannot help me. That's it. We're actually saying, God, you cannot help me. And the truth is that how big is our vision that God cannot help us? Has he not helped people? What we want to do, is it bigger than what some people have done? Do we even know who this Holy Spirit is? You see, some of us have not been able to, you understand, come to the point where we just allow the, the Holy Spirit is tired of seeing small, small visions. He's tired of seeing small, small visions. And he wants us to, he wants us to blast this thing. Because what it takes for us to achieve it, we have it. We just need to stretch. Tell somebody stretch. I'm telling you, we need to stretch ourselves. We need to stretch ourselves and get out of so you must conquer fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Listen, fear is a spirit just like faith is a spirit. And what do you do to those kind of spirits? You cast them out. Almost every time you have things speaking to your mind, you must learn how to speak back. Sometimes when some of these thoughts are going on in our mind, we just keep quiet. No. Yes, you think somebody may think like you've gone nuts on the road. Open your mouth and cast it out. It's only you that know what is happening to you. So when those thoughts, maybe God has told you, I want you to do this, this project. You now look at yourself. The bad one is to look at how much you have first. You see that money side can paralyze your vision and reduce your vision to a camel vision. Because by the time you now look at the funds required, you will just disqualify yourself by yourself. I don't know if you understand. You will just disqualify yourself. I understand there are things that ought to happen in seasons in our lives where we plan. That's okay. But for us to just physically look at what we have, especially when it comes to finances, and conclude that finance is the only reason why this thing will go forward. No, we're actually shortchanging ourselves. So fear is deadly. I need you to know that what you're afraid of is even afraid of you. Sometimes most of the things that we fear do not even happen. You just be killing yourself for us. Sometimes some of the things that we're afraid of, they don't come to pass. He asked some people, dream. Some people are even afraid to dream. Hey, you think when you dream big, you are being proud. No. And again, let me also say, for you to even see, you need to step out of certain environments. Because listen, you will be confined to the images that have been, you, you have exposed your mind to. To the places and to the people. I, I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. If you have not seen a skyscraper before, they ask you to draw one. You will only draw the one that you have seen. I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. If you go to the village and, and ask my grandmother to draw a house, she will draw what she has seen all her life. She will never draw a 10-story building. Praise the Lord. So for some of us, even when we get into our plans, you find out that your plans will be reduced to what you know, to what you have seen, and to the environment that you have been. And I'm asking in 2020, can we step out of those normal environments and listen, with technology, you can step into diverse environments. Praise the Lord. I said with technology, it's not only to be doing selfie and doing Instagram. Insta feed. Eh -eh. With technology, you can step into environment and meet people that will just shift the brain from this side to this side. Praise the Lord. Fear. Some people, it's actually fear to reach out to some people. You, there's some people, you look at it and say, ah, they're high up there. I cannot reach to them. No. You can't. This is a year of breaking Fought on the left and on the right. In Jesus' name, because this is the beginning of a new decade. 
So we must conquer fear. God told them, be of good courage. We need courage. To take the land, Joshua needed courage. I said to take the land. So to take your own share, you need courage. Because listen, there are times where even what God told you, you will see disappointment. If you are not courageous, you back out. I, I, you understand? So, so that we don't think because God said it, everything will be smooth. Mba. You understand what I'm saying? So you must kill fear. Number two, you must plan by setting targets. And that's where, like for example, you want to look at your life. This year we have, um, Pastor has taught us this thing in the leaders meeting and I want to bring it. We have, in this year, you can divide the year into um, three quarters or four quarters. I want to break it down where it's very simple. So you come, so maybe January, February, March, Abby. Then you have April, May, June, July, August, September. They have October, November, and December. So, this is, you know, Instead of just kind of plenty, plenty. I want to build skyscraper in 2020. I want to marry in 2020. I want to born four children at the same time in 2020. I want to travel abroad in 2020. I want to lose weight. Ah, I will move from 80 kg to 60 kg in 2020. I want to do this. Sometimes you want to narrow it to maybe four big goals. You can have other small, small ones. And this is what I've done. This is, then you can now pick the year. This is like the first quarter. So you can do January, February, March. What do you want to achieve? You come, April, May, June. Are you seeing that, you know, very soon now we'll enter February. You know how February used to finish fast, fast, Abby? Before you know, this one will come and go. So you want to April, May, June. What exactly? Here, what exactly? Before you know, you'll be saying happy Christmas again. So that at the end of this year, you can look at four major things that you have achieved. And sometimes the major things may not even be like buying land. It may be spending quality time and improving your communication with your spouse or with your children. One of the goals that we have this year, yes, our children, is for our children three of them to perfect the use of a musical instrument. Another one is for them to learn and speak Igbo. Yes. You know what I've started? I went to Google. Apart from the fact that the father said he will send them to the village. In. <laughs> That's the fastest way to learn. You guys stay inside that conquer Breba village <laughs> during long time. But again, I went to Google to YouTube and I downloaded cartoon videos. That's cartoon, but it's Igbo they're using. Guess what I do? I put and say, Wisdom, you know how to watch cartoon. This is cartoon. There is no how. Listen, if they can sing Bani, for, if he watches that thing for two months, he will know what is Egurebo. He will understand it. You understand? So what I'm saying there, there has to be specific. I don't know if you understand. I'm just trying to use language. So you have to plan it. Plan it. And let it be something measurable. Like I said, somebody said, I want to have four children at the same time. This year, you have to plan when you'll be pregnant and if you're married. And maybe you're doing IVF. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. So that we don't just, maybe to impress ourselves, we're going to write big, big things. I'm going to build four-story building this year. And the person doesn't have a job. By faith, I command that man that is living in that house to die so that I'll take it. It's not a good thing. A lot of Christians can claim eh, and, and, and force people to die before their time to claim their things. So that's what we want to do. Luke chapter 14 and verse 28. You remember that scripture said, who among you wants to build a tower? Will not first do what? Sit down. Listen, this is a time to sit down. Sit down and count the cost. The cost is not only money. Whether he has enough to finish. 
So maybe you're trusting, you want to marry this year. All the brothers and sisters that want to wear this year. You want to marry, you can look at it and look for a particular time now to put the wedding. If the wedding is going to be in October, bros, from here you have started saving money. As you're getting money, you give deposit for hall. And do you understand what I'm saying? You plan it so that it's not two weeks to where do you come and start binding Satan. You see somebody who is supposed to pay school fees. School fees that you know that you'll be paying, you know. Or a man whose wife is pregnant, except maybe something happened. Your wife gave the baby, gave you notice from the first day your wife took in. And on that day that the woman is in labor, you are saying, ha, Father, you have never fed me yet. Ask me today. Meanwhile, the baby gave you notice nine months ago. Do you understand what I'm saying? So planning is very, very key. Did the baby force himself or herself to come to the world? Why didn't you leave the baby there? That right now, you are binding the proprietress of the school that may your eye be blind. You will not see my child when my child will pass and enter the classroom. No. But wait, and that is why for those of us that are young here, yeah, young don't burn too many children. Are you going to competition? Why will you be burning six children? Even you think, even in this 20, 21st century, I met one woman. Sent me a message. Woman of God, I just want you to believe the Lord with me. What is it? I'm just believing the, the Lord for a male child. How many girls do you have? I have six. So I said, with all this wig and eyeglass you are wearing, you are still looking for a male child. Which one can you manufacture? In her mind, the female child is not enough, so she wants she must born boy to receive cheer in the family. Do you understand? Why would you give that to plenty children? Why? Is it a football? This thing. <laughs> Next. So you, you understand? Because when you have, if you, listen, eh? <laughs> if you know how much school quality education is now, eh? I'm not talking about that school they used slates to go. Those days we, we, we went with slates and we thank God, only God, thank God we understood. If you don't give your child quality education, your children may not be able to stand and compete and compete with where the world is going to. Look at small device that I have that even me that I think I know, I don't know something. This seven-year-old boy knows some things. If he can do this in seven years, when he's 20, what will happen? The world be turned upside down. Then you're not going to born seven. I just like them. The Bible says that my children will surround my table. I'm fulfilling scriptures. Just fulfilling, I'm just fulfilling scriptures. And when you're also not ready to have a child, who told you you must have a child? Maybe see you do wedding. You don't have, you, you have not balanced yet. Father, Twins, triplets, so that they will know that you are the Lord. <laughs> Meanwhile, your financial state, you know. You don't know children are very expensive. Children are expensive, oh. You think children are not expensive? Once you give back to a child, you will buy pampas for two years. Go and calculate money for pampas. Father, I just want quadruplets. Fifth plate, Lord. Show them, oh God. When one come, your head will be correct. <laughs> so, next thing we want to do, after we have done, then we want to actually create a vision board. Next, create a vision board. Now, I'd like you to project. I think I gave the people at the back. I need you to project something. In the book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk chapter... African people that try some African people. Miss, only two children we wanted to do. Two. One said the first time. Two. My father and my mother started preaching long sermon for me. This thing. 
If they gave birth to Leah, you do know how the world would have been. And the Lord answered me, no, not one. And I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I will answer when I'm reproved. I will watch to see what he will say unto me. Now we must understand that as much as we have these plans, in addition to the plans, remember we're taking actionable plans for you to take action. You must now create a vision board that becomes, sir, can you put it up on the screen? Okay. That becomes very pictorial. Now, what is a vision board? A vision board is very simple. It's a visualization tool. It's a visual, a vision board is actually a visual, a visualization tool that represents your goal and your aspiration. So you go get magazines. You can see some of those pictures on social media. Get magazines, cut them out. You may think, ah, these things are, they are not working. They work. Cut them out, paint them. You can create a board so that every morning and attach scriptures to them. Let those pictures speak to you. Have you noticed that even like a car, eh? when you're dreaming to buy a particular car, all of a sudden you just be seeing that car everywhere on the road. Have you noticed it? You just be seeing that car everywhere on the road. There's something that in those two your subconscious is even in your sleep. Even in your sleep, you see it. Let me tell you the truth. You see this scholarship thing. I dreamt scholarship. I saw scholarship in the dream. I wrote it down. I pasted it. The children saw it. They confessed it. That is why they are having it. That's why they are having it. You paste it there. You are single, you're trusting. Them. Go and get picture of a happily married couple. Paste it in your vision board. Be seeing it. So that in case if you have been, all the marriages you have been hearing of are the one that they used to fight and break people's head. When you, this one now is the one that is sweet. Praise the Lord. So it's very, very important you begin to get pictures, they'll put it up. You begin to get, put it, put it somewhere in your house. You can't even put, and you must have, you should have more than one vision board. You should have it. So you sit down in your house, get all this magazine, whatever it is, get it. You want to do your masters, write it down there. Because it is only after you have done this thing that when resources come, these resources will be channeled to these things because they've always been in your subconscious. But when these things are not in your radar, money will come and money will fly away. For example, you want to build a house. You think the people that built house had all the money stuck up somewhere before they started building? No. But you see, once you have picture of that house, you find out that your money will not have direction. The money will not be going there. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. The money will not be going there. Maybe you want to run a program. Once you have set your mind, you have picture of what you want to say, your savings and everything will not be going towards that place. But if you do not, if after everything, pastor has preached, everybody, and then we just come to church and we're hyped, makarada basha, lake and go, everything will remain the same. Nothing will happen. Praise the Lord. You want a promotion, a raise in your office, write it there. Then you now walk back up. What do I do to get a raise? I don't know if you understand. What do I now do to get a raise? For example, you want to get into a managerial position. You have to start behaving like that position before you get to that position. And do the work that that position requires. That's vision board. Praise the Lord. If you have kids, do vision board for your children, especially those of them that can understand. Maybe like from as much as four years, five years. You know, sometimes we think these children are, these children are very smart. So he said, let the children, be, you see these ones, they've written vision, they have their vision. No? They have vision, academic vision, spiritual vision. Let them start having vision from now. When they are 30 years, they will continue to have vision all their lives. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So it's very, very important that we do that. Next is for you to identify, number, num, number what now? Number four, identify relationships that you need. You don't need, there are some strategic relationships you need. 
Some of the persons you need, I will mention, number one, you need a mentor. Number two, you need like a colleague. A colleague that is iron, sharpened iron. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Next, you need a coach. There's a difference. You see your mentor, eh? If someone there's a mentor to you who hold your hand, your mentor can tell you, hey, don't go here. This thing can kill you. Don't do this. Your coach is somebody that helps you to achieve a specific result. Some of us will have to pay for coaching to achieve what we want. I don't know if you understand. So that we're born again or we read Bible does not mean that everything we will achieve, we get it from the Bible. Yes, the Bible is the foundational book. The engineering you did, did they use Matthew to teach you engineering? Did you eat only communion before you became doctor? I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. For some persons, for, some, for those of us who are into maybe uh, entrepreneurs, you may need a coach. I was listening, I did a training last year, and the person that coached me, when I heard when she said she paid $25,000 for a, to a coach in this country, and <laughs> she coached me on how to transform because we want to convert our Wisdom Driven Marriage Academy to online courses. I had to go and pay somebody a Saturday class, online class to learn. Humble myself inside the class to learn. Now, there's a training she gave to all of us that she coached. I was listening to it. And she said, she paid $25,000 that the first time when she wanted to meet the coach, she said, ah, no, she doesn't have money. Holy Spirit said, stay there. She said, after she had that session with that, because listen, there are some persons that who have been trying to pick their brain. You have to invest in them. You have to pay for some of their courses before you can have access to them. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. I'm just telling you. She said she had to, when she paid for that, when she finished with that person, that person became like the number three person I'll mention. You need sponsors. People that will mention your name and recommend you because of what? You have a relationship with them. She said when she finished, she was like, hey, ha. Ah, she paid $25, $25,000 just to move. She says her business was stuck at a particular level. And God was telling her, this is the person you need. This person, this person. She was still there, dilly dally, until she went and sat down and learned. That girl is no lying. This year alone, because she lost her dad, and at a point, she actually stopped. She go, we went off social media for a while because she lost her dad. But she was not telling us that this year that she lost her dad, only from sales, she made $232,000. She does not sell physical product, though. knowledge product. So she now told me, that's why she was thinking, ah, so she now said, this $25,000 I, I paid to lend is nothing. Praise the Lord. Holy Spirit speaks through people. The knowledge to move our career or our business to another level, somebody is with it. I say somebody is with it. So this year, if you have never paid a coach or you have never gone for a training, you have never paid yourself, carry yourself to a class to go and learn, you may want to try it this year. I say you may want to try it this year. And she said the coach sat her down. And these people are serious born. These people are born again people. They are not, uh, they are tongue talking. The coach sat her down and enlarged her vision and told her to believe God for three, three million dollars this year. She said, the well, first time the coach said it, she wanted to faint. The coach sat her down and strategized how the thing will happen. So she came out and she was speaking in tongues. Praise the Lord. So we need sponsors. We need mentors, coaches, colleagues. We need sponsors. Who are your sponsors? Most of those persons have that your money. Somebody that can just mention you. And it's by virtue of the investment you have in that relationship. Because the relationship has to be, it's not parasitic, symbiotic. Praise the Lord. It's very, very important. So one of the things you want to ask yourself is now, how do I get there? Target, timelines. You must set timelines for what you want to achieve. Now, don't feel bad when some of the things that you want to achieve do not come to pass. But ensure that you put in everything required. If it's the prayer that is there, pray the prayer. If it is the learning to go and learn the skill, learn the learning. If it is a book, read the book. 
If it is an environment that you need to step your feet into, step it. There are lot for those of us who are entrepreneurs and even Kayaba. Do you know that there are lots of programs that happen in the city of Portacos every week? I have lots of women who go there. I attend a few. I don't really see some of us there. Those are places that you meet people, network, exchange ideas. Praise the Lord. It's very, very important. As much as yes, when the church was very spiritual, we have not been called to isolation. It's separation. Not that you isolate yourself from every other person. No. Praise the Lord. And then lastly, what do you do? You now review. You want to make sure that you review every quarter. Because sometimes when we set goals like this, once we have set goals, we're just running. Fiam, fiam, fiam. We don't come back. Because you find out that as you go, eh, there are some things that will need adjustments. Praise the Lord. So you have to constantly come back to review to see, okay, what I have, is it enough to do this? Maybe I should downsize it. Maybe I should cut it small. Maybe I should do it like this. So we must constantly review to know where we are. You want to save, you want to buy, let me say maybe you want to buy a car. Yes, your plan should believe that somebody can dash you a car. But why not also believe that you can save up for the car? I, I, do you understand? If you have kids and you have, um, don't just believe, the Lord, the Lord that gives her children, the Lord that gives her children knows how to supply the money to train the children. When we reach there, we will cross the bridge. But if you start now and get maybe like a mutual fund or an investment, that you will be putting 10,000 10, now that the child is five years and you do a 10 years plan and you have three children, 30,000 naira in 10 years is how much? Calculate it. That's untouched money that you will not be touching. So that we know that, no, forget it. When you plan like that, are you excluding the Holy Spirit? Those of us that are very spiritual, we just allow the Holy Spirit to just be moving, be moving, be moving. No. You want to travel abroad, plan. Let vacation be in the plan. I don't know if you understand. Not you just mention it. Hey, I would have loved to travel abroad. You did not plan visa, you don't have. Passport, you don't have. I don't know if you understand. Like that guy, pastor's friend, that said he wants, he wants to go to South Africa. He now started praying that they will bring his visa to the house. This brother, I'm telling you, can speak in tongues for 10 hours. <laughs> That's how I used to pray. He said that he had when Reverend Mok by Reverend Mok by said they brought his visa. If I be a man of God, they will bring my visa. Pastor said, ask him, do you have passport? <laughs> he said, no, he does not need passport. <laughs> oh, boy does not know that visa is a stamp. He said they will bring the visa to him. He will lock himself. Inside that pastor's room and pray for morning to night, exercising his jaws. Where he would have ordinarily gone for massage. Until they now told him, go and get passports. He's in South Africa now. He would have seen me printing now. So you want to travel? Plan it. Plan it. Praise the Lord. Now, for people who may be, as I round up, for people who may be thinking, I've looked around. I'm not doing anything. The Bible speaking in the book of Ecclesiastes, whatever thy hand findeth to do, that basic level of whatever thy hand findeth to do is very critical. What does that tell you? Anything your hand can find. And the Bible said, do it with all your heart. What does it mean? Do it like you don't have a plan B. Let that doing be your plan A alone. It's only when it does not work, you move to something else. That thing that you thought is your plan A, automatically, plan B automatically becomes your plan A. Because sometimes when you're doing something, I say because there's a plan B, you don't take this one seriously. Because you think you have something to fall on. Praise the Lord. You don't take this one seriously because you think you have something to fall on. So when you're doing something, take it as your only plan A. This is it. 
Give it everything that you have. It is only when it does not work that you can move to another thing and that thing is not a plan B, it's not a plan A. Do you get what I'm talking about? Because there's a amount, there's amount of energy you give when you know this is the only thing I have. But for example, when you know that if hungry catches you, somebody can give you money to eat, you can decide to be lazy. But when you know that if hungry catches you, hunger will deal with you. That hunger moves you. Do you know that hunger can move you to be very creative? Sometimes as women, we think you say, ah, I don't have something in the house, I don't have something in the house. You become so creative when you enter your kitchen. Even if it's head of yam that you have cut all the bodies, more small head of yam, you will use this in and you do porridge, you become so creative. Sometimes it is good for us to be boxed into a tight corner so that we can become very creative. So the Bible says, whatever thy hand findeth to do, let me give you an example. Akara. I stumbled on a woman on Instagram, Akara. I see Akara chick, I begin. What does she do? What does she do? You see her dress with fixing nails. What does she do? She has followers. I can know Saturday morning because a lot of people are at home. So Akara business would naturally move Saturday morning. She has people she goes to deal with. It's a, it's a company. It's a company of people wearing chef. They are going to homes to deliver. Akara and Akama, she said, do you want a Akara? Snapping picture, selfie, like this. Whatever thy hand findeth to do, the Bible said, do it with all thy might. Everybody that God called was doing something. David, he was at the backside of the desert doing something. The day they came to anoint, he was not in the house. Maybe that's why they even chose himself. All these other ones came out. They were, they were in the house. The boy was walking. They went and called the one that was walking to come. He was doing something came. Now, this is it. Okay, I, okay. the vision board is showing here. I don't know. It's not coming up here. So, put it. For those of you that want to marry, I did not say you should go and carry one sister's picture. I have been liking that you have not spoken to and go and paste in your house. So. Sabi say, you're doing it by faith. Go and paste the picture there and be praying. I don't know if you understand. You understand? Praise the Lord. I want us to rise up on our feet. Have you been blessed tonight? So will you go and plan? As you're going home now, right? I have to go and do that. Whatever thy hand finds to do, what you are not ashamed to buy, don't be ashamed to sell. Do it. Sell it with style, speak in tongues over it to sell. And when that phase of your life passes, you move to the next thing. Because we'd be so shocked that you needed that knowledge and you needed that experience. No experience is a waste though. I said, no experience. All of these things are positive. They come together. You find out that maybe you, you, are in a, you, you become, you are in a place to cancel somebody and you want to start telling them stories. My coach who coaches people and makes, she started by doing, what did she do? You know, Ankara bangles. That's what, that's what Stephanie was doing. That's what she was doing. Just bangles now with earring. That's what she was doing. As she was doing it, she would tell her, come to her, she would come and teach. She now say, ah, I cannot be traveling. She now sat down and recorded it. So anybody that wants, she will send them the video they pay. That's how, so whatever thy hand finds to do, it is from that thing that Holy Spirit now gave her, say, you can create courses online. So it's the same thing. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So you start something, you don't know the potential that is in that vision until the Holy Ghost begins to enlarge it. I want you to pray for yourself. What you're doing is not small. I say your vision is not small. It's not small. Can you open up your mouth and speak? Shifting your mindset, shifting your life. I believe your experience is shit. Join us for the Wisdom Place. For details, follow us at Wisdom underscore shit and at Osiri Wisdom on Twitter and on Facebook. Or you can call ours on this number, 0803-374-3339. 0803-374-3339. Shifting your mindset. Shifting your life.
your real experience has shaped. 